Welcome back to the Torque Test channel. We finally have our hands on the battery that's been lighting YouTube abuzz, the DeWalt PowerStack. Despite them popping up in our video feed quite a bit lately, we had to wait for them to go on sale like you to buy one for ourselves and at $119 or $132 to get to our door for this tiny battery we're hoping is a good one for all of our sake. So today we're going to measure and dyno all the various questions about these we've spotted in our comments section. That's going to include a quick teardown, measuring its runtime versus a 5 amp hour pack, its performance on various impacts versus normal full size batteries DeWalt has compared its power to, the 5 amp hour and 4 amp hour 21700 cell compact, then that performance when cold or hot, as batteries in general tend to behave very differently at those extremes, and with DeWalt now having three different battery cell types, 18650s, 21700s, and lithium pouch now, you want to see what's what. It's hard to deny that if this pack can bring the beans, its size is attractive. This DCF921, the market's most impressive cordless compact by our measure, is a great tool, but the size of a 5 amp hour or even the slimmer 1P configuration 21700 cell 4 amp hour pack sticking out the front is a bit of an eyesore and less convenient in tight spaces where this one earns its keep. With the power stack battery on, this model and ones like the DCF850 impact driver starts to make sense why DeWalt is focusing on small lately, they just pair well. Inside, which is rather easy to access, you'll find the power brick, which is sort of a compressed stack of five lithium pouches, 1700 milliamp hours each, which in a series generates that 18.5 volts or 20 volt max. A misconception is why this pack is so big if the lithium pouch battery found in your phone is so much smaller. Well, your phone probably runs on 3.7 volts or so. This DeWalt needs five for their 20 volt line. But that still is 1.7 amp hours altogether, which, well, DeWalt's talked a lot about its power compared to full-size batteries, but they sort of glossed over its runtime quite a bit. So let's answer that right now with a DeWalt heat gun runtime test. In our Force Science episode 12, among other things, we tested this gun versus the Milwaukee, see that episode above. But for now, the 5 amp hour versus the power stack. These temps are recorded on different days, so keep that in mind, but we're interested in that runtime anyways. So the power stack nearly keeps up in temperature, but dies at the five and a half minute mark. The five amp hour goes on to reach higher temps since we're not measuring at the gun's heat, measuring how much it's able to heat something else up. And it dies at 17 minutes, sort of makes sense. The five amp hour is three times more capacity than a 1.7, and it lasted three times as long. They aren't lying about the capacity, just not talking about it very much. What they do talk about a lot is the power it makes. So let's get to that. Here's the DeWalt High Torque with a 4 amp hour 21700 cell battery versus the 5 amp hour 18650 style that it came with. Very mirror-like, and only one foot-pound difference at the end. This matches a lot of our testing in the past on 1P configured 21700 cell rows versus double row 18650 packs, like the rigid 3 amp hour versus 6 amp hour, and the Milwaukee CP 3.0 versus XC 5.0. Same performance in our experience there as well. All right, though, time for some power stack. Let's do it. Six thirty with some nice out the gate performance too, but overall, yeah, pretty much matching that four point oh compact and five point oh XR battery, like the rumors say, very closely. But before we try out that DCF nine twenty one atomic, which will shake things up, we want to know. Well, you guys wanted to know how the power stack performs versus traditional lithium cells in cold and extreme hot conditions. So we sent the three batteries you've seen thus far to go sleep in the freezer overnight, and now they register around. 7 to 10 degrees in freedom or negative 13 centigrade. Batteries of all types do not like the cold, so let's see if any of these are any different. 
Up first is the frigid 5 amp hour up against its original run. Four twenty two down from six twenty nine, thirty three per cent, one third less. Ouch. That's worse of a loss than we saw with a nearly dead, like blinking one bar battery. Basically turns your high torque into a mid torque at best. All right, time for the frozen four amp hour. Four forty-seven up on the five amp hour towards the end, which we experienced in person as a clear win, but we couldn't see the graph like you're seeing now. It was lagging behind the five amp hour until that end, so who knows? It's less cells, therefore maybe less mass is easier to warm up during a long run, and that's what we're seeing here. We're not sure. It's worth noting we normally do three runs each for each test on this channel, but temperature runs were not able to be replicated back to back for obvious reasons. So last up, we got the now nippy new battery, the power stack. Four seventy six, I mean, still well under a room temperature six thirty. But in this bunch, that's pretty good. Again, maybe it's that less mass being able to warm up quicker. These still are each too cold to charge right after their runs, so this seems pretty representative of how you'd be using them. Our friend Brian over at Workshop Addict has had more difficulty with a cold power stack versus a cold traditional battery though. So check out his video for more info for you poor cold weather souls. Most of the time though, for us, we're seeing higher temps where we live. If you leave your tools in the car, easily 120 to 130 degrees here and there. So we pop these in a convection toaster oven on low for about half an hour, at which time the batteries were reading around 140 to 145 or 61 centigrade like shown here. Here's the feverish five amp hour versus this base run. Six fifty two, an increase. We've seen increased performance before on hot impacts, which we assumed was sort of just the grease inside thinning out and providing less of a resistance to those planetary gears, but some of that could be those batteries warming up too, not sure. This is why we usually allow for a cool down time between runs. Next up is the fiery four amp hour. This time below the 5 amp hour, or 633, basically matching its room temperature run, which is all we can really ask of it. Last up is the piping hot power stack. Six forty-five, cutting the difference between the two other battery types, and again making a few more beans than normal, for whatever reason. Before we sum up these findings on paper, let's take a quick look at the DCF nine twenty-one, the sort of tool we feel Dewalt made these batteries for. Here's the new Atomic with the power stack versus the five amp hour.
333 foot-pounds, an increase, a very nice one too, which means on our average power rank chart for compacts, this one's power across the run gets updated from 246 to 260, still not changing spots, but perhaps defending that position better in the future. Speaking of average power across the run, the most powerful battery we tested across all temperatures was a power stack on the high torque today, up to 469 foot-pounds a second, or 421 average. It's not going to beat, for instance, a 6 amp hour XR battery with 21700 cells in a 2P configuration, as you'll see here, but it can keep up with the actually similarly priced 4 amp hour compact and 5 amp hour options we showed today. But it's a trade off, of course. You'll be sporting the same power with less weight and size, but half or a third the runtime, as we found out right away. So to us, this battery seems like a big win for tools you use away from your body often like small impacts and drills because I've used six amp hour batteries for the extra performance before on these tools and got real tired of it real quick. But for saws like DeWalt was showing at the release party extravaganza or other tools you're using constantly or often at long lengths, I'm not so sure. And considering the hype and red carpet DeWalt rolled out for this, we sort of wish there was more than just one 1.7 amp hour only battery option. I don't care if it was $220, I wanna see that other, I don't know, four amp hour pack that's possible with this tech. I guess we'll have to wait to see from Flex if that's the case. Either way, exciting stuff and we wanna see more. Appreciate you joining us for this deep dive. Click some stuff below to keep the momentum going. And thanks as always for watching.